everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is Jeff Elton, the CEO at Concert AI. Jeff, how are you today? Doing great, Jared. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to chat. I mean, as you and I are talking through this, we realize we probably could have put this together in person. So we're just, you know, it is what it is, but this will be equally as, as fun. And uh, I'm excited to chat with you here today. We're going to make that happen as well. Awesome. Well, let's let's assume, Jeff, that some of our audience have never heard of you before. I doubt it, but let's uh, if you give them a little bit about your background, be much appreciated. Right. So, uh, Jared, I'm Jeff Elton. I'm CEO of Concert AI. Um, I, my background is I've done a lot of work in digital solutions in healthcare for a number of years, both on the research side and on the healthcare delivery side. Also, have a background in having done work in clinical development, drug discovery, et cetera, back to my days at Novartis. So deeply, deeply committed to moving new biomedical innovations forward for the benefit of patients. I've been at Concert AI now for about four and a half years, and we are a very oncology-focused digital health company uh, that actually has the largest collection of research-grade data in the world, and we have a variety of AI machine learning based software as a service solutions that are actually used for clinical research, either to provide insights into patient populations, aid in doing clinical diagnosis, and actually now in running clinical trials. And what played like a big role in, in you wanting to, you know, be a part of this mission, this vision for the company? Um, you know, what was it about this space that kind of really attracted you to it? So, you know, oncology and cancer care is, I mean, one, it's, it's, you know, it's a devastating disease. It's touched everybody's life, every family's life. And, uh, and it um, kind of is something that uh, clearly affects most of us as we age. And I think as something that kind of does erode the quality of families in life, it kind of compels you to it. But it also happens to be one of the categories where we're gaining the most insights and there's more data available, whether it's next generation sequencing data, healthcare data, there's more data available on cancers as a consequence of the research activity and the care we've been doing than there is for any disease. And so for me personally, the commitment to moving biomedical innovations forward, but also seeing that in cancer care, because of the wealth of data that's now accessible to it, I can actually bring some of the latest data science, AI, machine learning based approaches and actually accelerate benefit here that can probably help other diseases in the future, but is actually more possible to advance quickly here. Um, because 50% of the clinical development pipeline of the industry tends to be in cancer focused therapeutics. And I don't know if everybody knows that, but most biomedical innovation is focused on, on kind of cancer, whether it's solid tumors and hematological malignancies, the value that can produce for patients of actually gaining those insights, given the wealth of new therapeutic entities actually kind of affords us the ability to reduce cancer deaths and have that kind of impact well beyond what we could actually do in some other diseases at the kind of current time. In fact, even over the course of COVID, the one disease category that continued to have a reduction in death, even while other categories were actually having problems, was cancer care. So it's, that's one that we're, we're making a lot of progress on. And because of that, I mean, deeply, deeply committed to that approach. And, you know, recently, um, President Biden announced his kind of American moonshot agenda and, and cancer was on there. Can you dive in a little bit more about uh, cancer's place on that on that moonshot agenda and then maybe um, how that aligns with what you're doing at Concert AI? Yeah, so the moonshot agenda actually starts laying out a framework for actually cancer that is um, not just about defining new therapies or bringing medicines forward but it's actually even about doing earlier stage diagnosis, actually bringing lower cost accessible technologies to do surveillance of people that maybe have a higher likelihood of being susceptible to certain cancers, either they know it because of you know, family characteristics or sometimes comorbidities. As an example, people that may have been historically smokers have a much higher likelihood of having uh, bladder cancers just because more than 50% of bladder cancer patients had a prior history of smoking, et cetera. So when you, when you get into those diseases, the, the idea here is almost to move the field even further to earlier stage and even to some preventative areas. 
What's super valuable about kind of gaining that kind of lens and that focus on the, on it is when we actually want, you know, cancer care, the reason we, we created a war on cancer that the federal government funded about 40 years ago that created the, the National Cancer Institute. It actually created comprehensive cancer centers. It created the training of next generation researchers and academic. So our history here is that this disease has actually benefited greatly and patients have benefited greatly from getting these large national based initiatives and those large national based initiatives have also spurred new innovation, which in itself has spurred kind of related economic activity. So it's been a great catalyst. And actually, I think now cancer care treatment is going earlier than I, the, you know, the positive part of the field is we're living longer. We're actually going to go through successive treatments. We actually have the ability to identify and intervene earlier. So if we can keep taking that earlier, it means the nature of the therapy and the interventions are much more sparing and much less burdensome on the patients and increase the likelihood of a very high quality life and high quality years that follows that early interaction. So it's a, it's a very important initiative for the field. Yeah, it's it's been interesting learning more about it, and then also hearing you you speak more about the the initiative, and then how that aligns with what you're doing in Concert AI. Uh, one of the things that that you and I were were planning on diving into here today too was around these uh, new models of biopharmer sponsor, um, and, and kind of what the requirements will be for that. Can you can you talk more about that? Yeah. So, you know, over the course of the um, pandemic, we saw an influx of a variety of different technologies, use of data in ways that we never saw before. So uh, digital clinical trials, sometimes called decentralized trial activities, use of real world evidence to complement randomized control trial, um, use of AI and machine learning tools to identify patients within the workflows of a provider to kind of make them sort of to make sure that the research site could know that they're actually eligible for a potentially beneficial clinical trial. So we saw these things that it actually sat out there for a number of years before the pandemic start to kind of come into kind of larger scale use in part because they didn't require people to visit those sites. Now with the more recent cancer moonshot with what we actually learned and what worked and what didn't kind of work during the course of the pandemic, you're now finding this very strong pivot where there's going to be a provider ecosystem of research sites that actually is going to not just have the academic sites, but also move more strongly into the community where 80% of patients live and receive their care, but they're going to actually be beneficiaries of super high quality digital tools and solutions that give them the capability that only large academic centers historically had before. You're going to find sponsors, the manufacturers who are actually conducting those clinical trials actually beginning to move more trials and more activities out to those community sites using digital only approaches. In fact, you may have seen, we made an announcement last week with Bristol Myers Squibb that we are initiating something called digital clinical trial solution. That solution uses the electronic medical record as the source system to populate the data for the trial. No people visit, no manual entry on part of this. And we're using data that actually comes out of existing clinical data sources and then writing it to the electronic data capture system in a way that we can actually begin to offer 30 to 50% improvements in precision and productivity. That is super important because the more productive we are, the faster we can conduct trials, the more quickly we can complete trials. Almost every other pharma company has a backlog of studies that they couldn't fund. And so therefore, we're going to be able to afford and be able to advance more innovations for patients in a narrow number of time, which actually provides more new medicine to kind of actually make sure that we're able to continue the progress we're making. So there's a lot of synergis synergisms here between how these components come together to really represent, we actually think it represents an entirely new paradigm and model about how we're actually going to be conducting clinical research going forward. And we don't think things are going to go back to the legacy models at all. You mentioned this recent uh, relationship uh, Jeff with Bristol Miles Scrib, um, how open are you to other types of relationships like that, or is this like you can oh. only work with them? No, Jared, it's a, that's a great question. So, you know, when you do work in healthcare, when you do work with healthcare providers, and you work across biomedical innovators, we kind of, you know, you've probably heard this term of co-optition. 
it actually means, you know, your, our job is to get great research done. That means that oftentimes we may be asked by a biopharma sponsor to work with a competitor. If that's what it takes to actually get things done, you know, in Concert AI has no exclusivity agreements. We have no conflicts of interest. We have nothing that prohibits us kind of working with different providers or different biopharma innovators. In fact, part of our credibility to play a role as that trusted digital intermediary here is actually to maintain that trust and neutrality in everything that we do. Super important characteristic when you're doing anything in healthcare having to do with patients. Yeah, I, I had to ask. And I think if you truly want to innovate, in any industry, especially healthcare, yeah. you have to be willing to sometimes work with the competition and Absolutely. you know other other types of partners. And and my go my part of my hope is someone's listening to this and they're like, I love what Jeff's saying, concert AI. This sounds like something that we should end up working with them and they reach out. That that would be awesome. Um, I do too, Jared. And actually <laughs> you're welcome. And and again, we're quite serious. I you know, there's never been a program where we did not work with another party if it furthered advancing needed by medical innovation for patients. I mean, that's got to be your North Star and everything you do in this industry. It's, a, you know, the work's tough itself, but it's actually incredibly meaningful and rewarding when you do get those advances. But you got to stay out of your own way uh, to get stuff done. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, Jeff, my last question for you, and we'll have you on again soon. But my last question for you here today is, you know, what's next with Concert AI that you're really looking forward to? So, um, you know, your your uh, podcast has really been kind of focused on a lot of aspects of, of digital. And I have to tell you, some of the areas we're seeing incredible uh, progress in is kind of bringing things like radiomics features to medical imaging where I can actually use models, pull it off. I don't have to move images around, but I can get insights actually much more rapidly. Give an example. We can actually get genomic status of a patient using radiomics without having to do next generation sequencing. I'll leave that out there as a little bit like, you know, what kind of thought here about how that kind of comes together. But there, the, the nature of what you can actually do as you start thinking about application of model centric approach, whether they're AI, machine learning, deep learning, and these are not scary things. These are things you, you actually provide transparency on, you publish on, you put them into a peer review, but they now give a utility and a speed of insight that we wouldn't have had before at a scale that we wouldn't have had before that actually can start to move out to the periphery back into those community systems. If you heard a theme of how do I enable community where actually the 80, 90% get their care, operate the highest possible levels of knowledge and insights, that's how we're gonna begin doing that. So that's definitely one theme. The other theme is what does an entirely digital system that moves at a faster pace look like? How do I take now that faster pace of innovation and get it back into clinical practice because it's a system. And sometimes clinical practice hasn't been set up to absorb actually that pace of biomedical innovation. And so we think there's some, some ways we could kind of approach that as well. Well, Jeff, that's all super exciting for, for you and the team and look forward to kind of hearing some updates on how, you know, everything continues to go. Like I said, we'll have you on again soon. This was a lot of fun. Right. Um, and, you know, wish you all the best as well as the, the Concert AI team um, and excited to chat with you again soon. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for taking the time. And I know you had to survive some weather patterns to make this happen. So thanks for doing that as well. Absolutely.